What's up everybody? Thanks for watching for the video. This video is about Terror Train. It's a Tubi uh, original exclusive. Um, I wouldn't exactly say that it's an original because it is based off the 1980 uh, Jamie Lee Curtis movie called Terror Train. Uh, I, I, I don't remember. I think I might have seen parts of it back in the day, but to be honest with you, I don't think I've seen the entire movie from back in the day. But I did watch the trailer, and I did notice that one of the things that I cannot stand is race swapping and gender swapping all of the characters. I mean, it drives me insane where it's like, well, it's a modern day interpretation. Bull crap. I make movies. I write movies. I'm going to cast the best person that's going to make my movie good. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what gender they are, unless it's a gender-specific role. But I, I don't care about their identity. If they make my movie good and my movie gets distribution so that I can make other movies, that's what I want. I, I, I'm not going to sit there and be like, well, there has to be 10% this, this uh, eth ethnicity and it has to be you know five women in it. No. I have a movie out, coming out. It's in the editing process. It's called The Warrior. It's got it's it's a fantastic script, and I got a fantastic cast that goes along with the script. I didn't sit there and make a little check mark on. Okay, I need to have this, and I need to have this, and I need to have this. I mean, it doesn't work that way. Tell a compelling story, and you get an audience that's going to appreciate it. So that being said, let's go over it. Okay, so the the movie begins with, um, I, I want to say ten to fifteen. Uh, people and it's sort of like a sorority and a fraternity uh, party and they pull a prank on a guy that's trying to rush a fraternity and elena who's the main character is basically she's not forced at gunpoint but they basically said well if you want to be part of the in crowd then you're going to have to do this this gag so she goes ahead and goes inside there and makes it look like they make it look like this guy's going to go sleep with elena and he goes in there and they actually put like a, a corpse inside the bed. It looked like a corpse. It could have been like a uh, something that they made up. But it looked real enough that it could have been a corpse to freak the guy out. He freaks out, loses his mind, gets taken off into an ambulance. So it's like, okay. If I know writing stories. Eventually this guy's going to come back and do something. I mean, right off the five, like 10 minutes in the movie... I know that this guy at some point is going to pop up and try to get revenge on somebody. So it pushes the, it pushes the story three years. Now the problem I have is why couldn't they, why, why did they have to push it three years? And it's like, well, because she's a senior now and she knows better. It's like you, you've been hanging with this group for the last three and a half years dealing with, um, some people that are just, they don't listen, they just party their butt off, and they sleep with whatever women says yes to them. Um, what makes you smarter then than, than you were three years ago? I, I don't understand why specifically it was a jump for three years, but they jumped it three years. So the kids are going on this train, and they didn't say specifically what, um, where they're going. They basically said it's a Halloween party on a train. They didn't say specifically how long the party was, where they're going, like what their final destination is. They basically says, okay, we're going to put them on a train and it's a Halloween party. Done. That's 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 the whole setting. And it's like, okay. Like, I, I'd like to have known at least the time. Like, okay, you know, we're in, we're in New York and we're going to... Um, Boston. So it's like you know what your time period is and how long this is going to take. Especially at a Halloween party. I've been to a bunch of Halloween parties and I've never had a Halloween party that lasted the entire day. I mean these folks literally were on this on this train that seemed like like at least 2 days. <laughs> I've never been to a and I you know back in the day I went to some jams. And I still didn't go to a Halloween party that lasted, uh, you know, like two days. <laughs> I, 
and we blew it out and i i'm still i'm saying that two-day halloween parties don't exist <laughs> so anyway so the kids get on the on the uh train and then one by one uh the the first kid dies he's he's wearing this um this um clown costume and he's chasing around another guy, Asian guy, that has a, his blow-up doll. So he's chasing this guy about his blow-up doll. Uh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, right off the bat, I see women are good, men are shitheads. I mean, they're, they're already laying the foundation. Where it's the the male characters are misogynist, or they're sleeping around with everybody, or they're they have blow up dolls because they can't get a girl, and then you have the girls that are intelligent and sophisticated and know everything about everything. I mean, this woke crap has got to stop. I mean, it really does. And you know, going into it, you know that this movie is not going to win an Academy Award. I get that. I mean, you're the suspension of disbelief is really high in a movie like this. It's a Halloween movie about a killer on a train. I mean, how long could this train be? You know what I mean? It seemed like it was like a 10-car train, but yet in the in the movie, it seemed like it was 100. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Snowpiercer, uh, but Halloween style. I, I don't know. So the, the, the guy that has the, uh, the mask on, and he's trying to chase around this other guy that's got his blow-up doll, he gets the, he's he he gets killed before the train even moves to, from the station. So then the killer puts on this mask. Then they're they're starting a party and they're starting to you know the drinks are flowing and everything. Then uh, the Asian kid dies and he gets put into like a, um, a bathroom and they lock the bathroom. And it's like okay that's suspicious because. How's a guy going to lock it from the inside and the but be dead at the same time? So it's like, you kind of have to have an idea of, okay, it's somebody that has access. And it's like, you're kind of, you're kind of doing that. You're kind of calling your shots because somebody like me is going to make, okay, so somebody's got access to those doors and it's not going to be just some random college kid that has access to it. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, so, you know, this kid dies then the, the the killer keeps on switching masks. So when he kills somebody, he puts their mask on. That way he can still continue to blend in and people won't know the wiser. Where it's like if he, he wasn't he didn't have the same mask on the whole time. So he kills the Asian kid, puts his mask on. I think it was like a dinosaur or something. <sighs> so that that kid's killed. Somebody tries to go into the bathroom. It's locked. They can't get in. The conductor, or she wasn't necessarily the driver of the train, but she's sort of the manager of the train, is like, well, you know, um, we'll, we'll figure it out later. Go go be safe and all this other stuff. And then when Elena comes back, the body's gone. Mysteriously gone. So it's like, okay, another person has access. So it can't. It, if it is some random kid, they stole some of these keys. So it's kind of like, okay, so... The, the amount of suspects is, they, they make it look like that everybody's a suspect, but the amount of suspects that are, like, dwindling the whole time, because it's like, okay, there's only a certain amount of people that have access to the train. Some random kid, drunk kid, is not going to be like, oh, look, keys to everything. I mean, that's just not going to happen. I mean, I don't, I don't quite understand that. And so they, so they had the, the, the race swap, they had the gender swap of all these characters, and then all of a sudden, here comes the woke language. Um, I'm looking for a uh, um, a non-binary girl to ha to hit, you know hit on and and uh, and and all this other stuff. And it's like, come on, like the people that are produce that are writing this crap, they want to virtue signal and, and say, oh, I'm an ally, so I'm going to use different words so that people are like, ooh, that person's an ally. Again, I don't give a crap. If it doesn't fit the storyline, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, I'm going to say, oh, no, non-binary. Just just so that I can get somebody to go, I'm non-binary. I relate. It's like you're relating to a kid that's a scumbag that happens to say non-binary. And it's like nine times out of ten, 
and in movies and in real life, usually the people that are screaming on the mountaintop about about in- inclusivity are not inclusivity. They're basically sitting there going, well, you're cool, you're cool, you're cool, and you're not. How is that exclusive? How is it in- inclusivity? It's not. It's virtual signaling hypocritical. And it's like, I don't want to see my art with that crap in it. People already do it to begin with. A lot of people are are insanely hypocritical. I don't want to see it in my art. Now, if you want to have a character that's non-binary and you write the um, correct story for for that person and give me a reason to care about that person in the mix of the story... I'm never going to say, well, you know, that non-binary, blah, 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 blah. I'm never going to say that because you, you give them a purpose. You give me you give me a reason to care about that character, but they never do. It's always just like, well, that random person over there is inclusive, and that person over there, that I, I know a person that knows a person that knows a person that's non-binary. Most people can't sit there and pick out and, and, and actually know somebody that's non-binary. So it's like the language in, in the movie, it's, it, it's ridiculous. Like the, the virtual signaling is not real. It's not real life. It's basically like, well, we're going to put some of these words in there. So hopefully we can get somebody under the age of 21 to watch our movie. The, they're not going to, re- if they like horror movies, they're going to be like, okay, you know, I'm going to check this out. They're not going to be like, ooh, is, did they say anything about being inclusive or non-binary in it? I mean, come on. I mean, it the, the virtual signaling is, is getting ridiculous. So at this point in the movie, I was kind of like, I just wanted to watch a funny horror movie for the, you know around the Halloween season. I don't need to be preached to. I don't need to be virtual signaled. I don't need to be, oh, you're not inclusive, but uh, you know, you're cool, you're cool, and you're not. How's that inclusive? It's not. It's it's hypocritical. It's hypocritical in my art. It's a hypocritical out in the real world. And I don't want those I don't want those combined. The real world sucks half the time. I want my art to be art. I don't want the real world to come into my art. I think that's what the the main the main point I'm trying to make is. Okay, so back to So you've got Doc who's basically trying to sleep with any girl that says yes. And he was the catalyst of coming up with the scheme at the beginning of the movie uh, about this kid sleeping with a dead body and this kid goes crazy and gets taken to the hospital. So at this point, everybody, Elena sees this dead body um, and she's starting to kind of um, be leery and she doesn't want to panic everybody, but she also fears that her friends are going to be targeted so she's going around trying to kind of do a little bit of investigation and try to get to find out who's doing this to to people so i i do like the fact that she didn't just automatically jump to conclusions they kind of did that at the end but that's kind of fine because they've already eliminated a bunch of people so it's kind of like you know uh, there's a difference between jumping to the conclusion when you got 50 people versus jumping to the conclusion when you have like five people. Then it's like, okay, we got these five people versus 30 people. So I totally understand where it's like, okay, you're looking at person sideways, like, okay, um, I don't trust any of them. Until they give me a reason to trust them, I don't trust them. So she's going around. The, the assistant conductor is also starting to realize that there's there's stuff that's happening on this train. So she's doing kind of her own investigation. She's walking around with an axe to make sure that people are walking around the train uh, safely and that she, at least she has some sort of weapon to try to fend, fend off whoever's doing this. So Doc is um, in the room by himself and all these cell phones keep like these cell phone videos keep coming up and it's sort of like distracting him and he's looking at the video and it's all the video of the kid sleeping with the dead body at the beginning. So it's like, okay, so it's gotta be the, it's gotta be the kid coming for revenge on doc and some of his friends. So, um, he's distracted by this. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, I think he gets freaking like, um, like stabbed in the throat and goes down. He's done. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So the girls come running in because they realize that Doc may be um, a target. So they run to the room. The girl, the girl that's like the assistant conductor, is trying to find the keys, and she get, opens up the keys or the opens up the door. And then uh, they walk in and they hear like rumbling and they turn they turn around and out of the closet is is Doc's head and it just rolls on the ground. I mean that was kind of a that was kind of a cool little you know because they don't really do that much anymore. So that was kind of a like a, a blast from the past where it's like this guy's head's gone and it rolled. <laughs> so I was like, oh okay. <laughs> So that's kind of like a kind of a throwback hot horror type movie uh, trick. So I was like, okay, I can respect that. So <clears throat> Lena, Elena is 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 um, talking to this guy that's a magician that's on the on the on the train, and he's been flirting with her, but then he's also been saying weird comments. So she starts to ex- she starts to suspect him as being the killer. So they go try to find him, and then they can't find him. And then, um, as she's walking down the hallway by herself, the 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 Kenny kid that was at the beginning that they played the prank on just like shows up out of nowhere and and like shows up like behind her, like ten foot behind her. So there's this weird scene about him, like all I want is just a kiss from you, and that's all I wanted before. And like he was real, like a real. I don't know, wuss. <laughs> Just a wuss type behavior. <laughs> Where it was like, I, I don't, I, I, I'm just a soft spoken weird kid. And all I just wanted a kiss. So she goes up and she's looks at him like she's scared to death. She goes up to him and she kisses him. And then he kind of like grabs her. And the magician like goes on, it comes out of nowhere and shoots him right in the head. So, Elena goes to this car and she's like, thank God it's over. This is the kid that's, that's doing it to us and he's dead. So she's looking through all these little videos and stuff of the party. And she realizes that there's a, a character of a bunny that's in most of the videos. We'll come to find out that one of the videos has the bunny with his head, like, you know, pulled off. And it was, it was this, it was that uh the kid that was that had the plank the prank played on kenny he was at the party the whole time but he never did anything and they got most of the video where he's basically just standing there like um singing and dancing with him and nobody knew who it was so it was like they kind of was like okay they, was kenny the, the actual killer and he just happened to be in the videos but they never really covered that but she knew that okay so there's there's something going on so, all of a sudden, somebody comes into the room uh, with a mask on and tries to kill her. She sort of, like, uh, pushes him out of the way and starts running. And then, <clears throat> it's like, okay, so obviously, the person that she thought it was, Kenny, is not it. So, I think she gets away. She goes into the car at the, at the, front, of the, at the front of the train and the manager of the of the train is basically, well, stay in here. I'll keep you safe. And she locks the door. And then she turns around and she sits down with Elena and just starts screeching at her. And it's like, what? Why is she screeching? And then they do like a flashback where it's basically the girl that the woman that is the train conductor manager is Kenny's mother. And, Ken, and she was the one that was killing people the whole time. So I, they didn't really they didn't really say if Kenny was doing it or if the mom was doing it. But the mom was really like manly looking. <laughs> she didn't look very feminine. So I mean she just this lady was a weird psycho B. <laughs> so the, the the women tussle and the 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 mom uh almost gets a the control of Elena and then Elena finally gets her uh at the end. And I think he, I think she stabs her in the heart and then pushes her off the train. And then uh, the day is saved. They get off the train and, you know, they're all wore out and she, her friends are dead and she's reminiscing and the whole thing. 
And then all of a sudden they, they go to the, the, the mom that's on the, on the train tracks and sort of one of those, those shots where it's, where it's uh, from the leg and it goes up to, to the upper pelvis and upper or chest and then at her face. And then all of a sudden her eyes open. So, you know, there's going to be a second one. They, I mean, they, you know, there's going to be a second one. So hopefully they don't have the same characters fall for the same thing the whole time. So, <laughs> Or maybe she, maybe maybe Elena's like working on a plane, so it's uh, the terror on a plane. <laughs> so I mean, the the the, I know going into it that it wasn't going to be an Academy Award winning performance. I knew going in that it's like okay, this is going to be you know a kind of cheesy, fun horror movie to watch, and I I liked it. I just didn't like the virtual signaling. Let's change the event, the gender of everybody is, uh, you know, involved. Like, I don't like that crap where it's like, oh, we're making a movie for this generation. Bull, bull pocky. You, you have original uh, content of the original one that Jamie Lee Curtis played in 1980. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is the, sc the original sc screen queen. She, she's the OG. So it's like, to, to disrespect Jamie Lee Curtis's role in that movie to change it because you felt like it and you met, you wanted to make it better is it's disrespectful. It's very disrespectful. And like, and I, like I said at the beginning, I cast people so that they make my movie better. And that when it goes to distribution, people dig it because my movie's better. My movie, my movie is, is casted well. I don't care what somebody's color is. I don't care what their religion is. If they are good and they make my movie better, I'm going to cast them. But I, I don't know how you guys think about this movie. I liked it. I thought it was kind of a campy Halloween type movie. But the language in it was kind of, it was kind of rough. It was kind of rough because they want to uh, get, you know, 19 year old kids or 18 year old kids to like their movie. Just, just have a solid horror movie, and I think people really dig it. You don't have to sit there and change the, 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 the language with stuff and change the wording and, oh, you can't say this, but you can say this because, you know, people are going to be butthurt about it. Like, just make a solid movie, and I think it'd be all right. I mean, if, if they kept away the language and the, the gender reversal and all this other stuff... I think it would have been kind of a cool, solid Halloween movie because I, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was bad. I just didn't think it was, you know, it's going to, it's not going to be a cult movie, you know, like a Halloween, Halloween, the original Halloween is and, and uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. It's not going to, it's not going to have that longevity that some of those original movies had. So I don't know what you guys think. Uh, t let's talk about it in the comments below, like, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.